Welcome traders to another Tickner Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 31st of October with me Patrick Munley. In the US markets we'll have a broad range of US data and events to digest over the next couple of weeks. Most importantly Wednesday's Federal Reserve FOMC meeting is set to result in the fourth consecutive 75 basis point rate hike. Given the annual rates of core inflation are heading higher rather than lower, the economy has returned to growth with a decent third quarter GDP report and the labour market remains robust with job vacancies exceeding the number of unemployed Americans by 4 million. The tone of the press conference and the outcome of next Friday's jobs report will then help markets firm up expectations for what the Fed may do in December. There have been hints that officials could open the door to a slower pace of rate hikes and after 3.75% of interest rate increases net after Wednesday, there is a strong argument for taking stock of the situation. Unfortunately, the data hasn't been moving in the, in the right direction and market watchers would probably need to see a, a noticeable slowdown in the month-on-month -month rates of core CPI increases from 0.5 to 0.6% month over month towards something more like 0.2, 0.3% month over month to give the Fed the confidence to moderate the pace meaningfully. At this stage, it isn't just uh, markets aren't confident that this will happen in time for the December FOMC meeting. So there remains the strong possibility that uh, markets will get a fifth consecutive 75 basis point hike versus the 50 basis point view. Attention will then shift to the midterm elections uh, that will be held on November 8th. And a bunch of different scenarios and potential impacts. The polls seem to be shifting in the direction of Republican controlled Congress, which will greatly limit what President Joe Biden can achieve in the second half of his presidential term. This means less government influence on the economy and will put more pressure on the Fed to cut rates in the second half of 2023 to support the economy as nothing will come from the fiscal side. From a technical perspective, uh, the dollar index continues to trade within our uh, invalidation and target levels. So we have an invalidation level for the downside objective at 109.09 at 113.85. Uh, currently, what I'm looking for now is price to uh, correct here versus this last leg to the downside, three-wave corrective move, something similar in scope and scale to what we saw in the last corrective leg. And then I'm looking for a new low, ideally into Wednesday's FOMC meeting. And uh, from there, I'd anticipate we could see a pop in the dollar and certainly think about a move back up to test 112.12 after we achieve the downside objective at 109. Moving to the Eurozone, in terms of data next week, uh, Monday we get October CPI, so uh, year over year, last time out 10%, core inflation remains uncomfortably high in the Eurozone. We also get Q3 uh, GDP, 0.8%, uh, clear weakening in domestic demand to be evident there. And then we head into Wednesday, October, S&P Global Manufacturing PMI, last time out 46.6, and that will, that's the final estimate for, uh, for the month. And then we head into Thursday, you get the unemployment rate, 6.6%, anticipated to remain holding at those record lows. And then we round out the week on Friday with services PMIs, uh, final estimate looking for a 48.2. So from a technical perspective, pretty much the inverse to the dollar index really, Looking for price to hold support here at the 99.20, 99.30 area. Looking for an extension back through prior cycle highs, uh, 1009. And then on to the interim upside objective, which is 101.60. So if we clear that on a closing basis, well, our next upside objective is 102.45. Moving to the sterling dollar and the UK in terms of uh, data next week really is all about the Bank of England. It was unthinkable really only a few weeks ago, but now uh, markets think a 50 basis point rate hike is narrowly more likely than that 75 basis point rate hike, which had been priced in uh, prior to the political uh, stability or some sense of stability that has been restored uh, over the prior week or so. It's undeniably a close call and whatever happens, the committee is likely to be heavily divided. But in recent speeches, policymakers have been signaling that markets are overestimating the amount of tightening left to come. Meanwhile, following the various policy U-turns 
of recent weeks, the expected boost from the fiscal policy now looks similar to what was expected before September's meeting when it opted against a 75 basis point move. With the latest data not providing clear justification for a faster hike and sterling now stronger than it was before the September meeting, markets think there is a good chance that the bank will underdeliver or on market expectations. So from a technical perspective, sterling broke through the resistance at the 114.90 back testing now. So I'm looking for uh, ideally a break higher here through that uh, that 115 level to set up a grind higher into our target zone of 120. At this stage, any pullback should find initial support into the 113.11. And really it would take a close through there to, uh, to suggest the potential for retesting our invalidation level down to 109.20s, but for now, the focus is on a grind higher into our 120 target zone. Moving to Japan, in terms of data, Monday, September industrial production, uh, looking for a negative 0.8% print there, interim fragility on weather and softer global demand, still a big risk there. And then moving into Tuesday, we get the manufacturing PMIs, uh, final estimate 50.7 anticipated. And that, uh, I'm sorry, then Friday, uh, rounding out the week, we get the services PMI, final estimate looking for 53 print there. In terms of the dollar yen, uh, continuing to look for a downside objective now at 143.25 versus our invalidation swing high here at 149.70. So I'd be looking for price to roll over from current, from the current levels and extend down into the high volume mode and then onto our target zone, 143.25. At this stage, any close back through the invalidation level will open a retest prior cycle highs up to 151.90s. Running out the data down under in Australia, what have we got? Monday, September retail sales, looking for a 0.5% print there potential. Uh, whisper number is 0.3%, gentle slowdown in normal sales, uh, partially reflecting price rises. We also get private sector credit looking for a 0.7% print there. Emerging gradual slowdown as policy stimulus starts to be reversed. And then heading into Tuesday, we get the RBA rate decision. Uh, markets are looking for a uh, potential of another uh, 25 basis point uh, increase there. RBA to respond to the, the deteriorating um, inflation outlook that we are seeing. RBA governor will be speaking uh, at a dinner on Tuesday evening. And then heading into Wednesday, we get September housing finance looking for a negative 3% print there, potential of a negative 2.5%, down sharply since the start of the year, and more falls to come, albeit with some stabilization anticipated in sales volumes, pointing to a more moderate pace in terms of the September month. Then heading into Thursday, trade balance, Looking for a 9.1 billion print there. Exports are pretty flat, really. Uh, obviously, coal volumes down. And imports are anticipated to dip after that strong burst seen in recent months. And then on Friday, we ran it out down under with the RBA statement on monetary policy. Uh, looking for forecast updates there with Q3 retail sales. Uh, looking for a sharp slowdown there as price surges start to impact uh, retail expenditure there, so looking for a 0.2% print. From a technical perspective, the Aussie is uh, is correcting its initial equality objective test at that 65 uh, in 13 level. I'm looking for a three-way corrective move to find support here into the 6370s, and from there, our next upside objective is 6590s. And if we can start to build acceptance above there, then we're going to start to think about that major trend line test on the daily time frame, 6740s. And just rounding things out, as always, with a quick sentiment check in terms of Bitcoin. Bitcoin broke out of our triangle, traded to both our initial upside objectives, the 20,400, 20,963. We are now looking for pullbacks to find support into the 20,200 level. And we are looking for a test of our next upside objective, 21,461. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing October the 31st. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.